this Christmas. It's the word hope. Hope. It's a very good word, isn't it? And the song that they did where hope came down, when Jesus was born, hope was born. That's amazing to me. Several weeks ago, I not only serve as a pastor here, but I serve as a chaplain at the hospital, and I was contacted and asked if I would speak at what was called a Blue Christmas Service. I wasn't sure what that meant or what that was all about. But it was about people who are grieving at Christmas. So as soon as they asked me to speak and I accepted their invitation, I began to uh, just pray and say, God, help me at this community event to be able to encourage people who's gone through loss. And it's fresh, it's raw at Christmas. I realized this, that we lose the innocence of childhood very quickly in life, quicker than what any of us care to admit or face the reality of. And life hands us with a lot of difficult situations and that innocence is gone and we take on this baggage that we carry in our life and it can bend over our back, it can tax us, it can take smiles away, it can make us feel lonely in a room full of people because life can be hard and though God is very good, the enemy's lies are very deceitful that you are loved and we can carry hope through every stage of our life. I realized something very important. We have wonderful friends who traveled from Indiana and Ohio to be with us. I love these folks back there. They introduced my wife and I to each other. How much better does that get? <laughs> but we were in Ohio and we were celebrating Thanksgiving with my mother-in-law and father-in-law. My girls call them Gigi and Papa. It'll make sense to you in a minute. It was supposed to be Grammy and Papa, Pappy, but it came out Gigi and Papa, and it's just stuck. And so my little blondie is just a handful of energy, but she loves her Gigi. She's with Gigi every moment of the day when we're there. And unfortunately, because we serve in our community and we pastor, we live far away from family, so we treasure those moments. And after a week of being together at Christmas, we pulled out of the driveway at Gigi and Papa's house. And I looked right behind me in the car seat. And I had the most heartbreaking thing happen to me. I looked, and there was a little blonde-haired girl with tears just running down her face. I said, are you okay? And you know what she did immediately? She went like this. And I realized, that she felt emotion, she felt heartbreak, she felt pain. And you know what? It's okay to feel it. It's when we repress it and we hide it that it becomes very destructive to us in life. So sometimes we just have to feel the anguish of everything that we've gone through in life. And so I told her, I said, it's okay, you can cry. That was really good of me to say, and I felt like I was joining her, and I was giving her liberty to do that. But you know what? I did not do what my wife did. My wife did so much better than me, because you know what she did? She turned around and grabbed her hand and just started crying with her. How much better than to join? And so what I'm saying to us tonight is, I know that there are some here that you know the pain of death, you know, the pain of divorce, you know, the difficulty of disappointment. And so tonight, Blacklight is about we are joining you. I may not be able to fix it. I may not be able to have all the right words to say, but I'm going to join you. And sometimes in our grief and in our loss, people come by and they say lots of intellectual things to us. Well, it's going to get better. Time will help you. Someday you won't be identified by this, but you'll be identified by something else. And one day you'll smile again. And you know what I want to say to them? I've been guilty of saying that myself. But I want to say to them, wait a second. It's not my mind that's broke. It's my heart. And so often at Christmas time, that's what it's about. It's about memories and changes and differences and sometimes feeling like hope is not there. But I want you to know that there's one who gives and keep hope, keeps hope alive in us. And his name is Jesus. 
And if you don't know Him as your Savior, if you've never confessed your sins and asked Him into your life, this is what Christmas is about. To give you the opportunity to know Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. Because He loves you. You know, some people think hope is this. You plan your vacation and you hope for good weather. I mean, hey, you've taken time off work. You've invested in that place you're going. You're, you're hoping. And so it becomes the hope of that. Or maybe you're wishing for something for Christmas, hoping. And so hope and wish becomes kind of synonymous with each other. And then the real brutal reality of life comes by. And you realize that sometimes wishes don't come true. And hopes can be diminished. That is what it was like in Bethlehem. God's people was under the oppression of Roman government and it looked like there was no hope and there was no way out. But in a manger, hope was born. The same hope that is birthed in our lives today, Jesus Christ. Solomon, the wisest of all men, he said this, when hope is deferred, it makes the heart sick. But when hope is given, it is a tree of life. How can I hold hands with the widow and just be a silent presence? How can I look at someone who is diagnosed with a terminal diagnosis? Because I know hope doesn't fade with all those things. Hope is real. And so I want to encourage you tonight that no matter what your situation, Hope is real. I've had people look at me and say, why would you want to birth children into this world? It's crazy. I'm not worried about what happens in our government. I'm not worried about... My hope for my girls is the same that I hold for myself. It's in Jesus Christ. And the same God that sees me through is the same God that will see them through. And so tonight, if you feel like you are hopeless or you are lost, or life's brutal reality has just taken the wind out of you. Would you look me up after church? After this program, and I'll pray with you because I want that same hope that I share in my life to be a lively hope in you. Peter said it's a lively hope. It's not dead, but it's alive tonight. And so you know what I want for you this Christmas? I want you to enjoy the innocence of Christmas as a child. The wonder, the splendor, and the hope. But the only way it comes is through Jesus Christ. He is our only hope. And truly the only unlimited resource for all of our tomorrows. Let hope be birthed in you this Christmas. God loves you. He loved you so much that He was born. But not only was He born, but He died. And He resurrected from the grave to show that He has power and life. And when we pray to God, He sits at the right hand of God ever making intercession for us. So know that hope can be birthed in you and your situation. I'm so glad you're here tonight. How many is enjoying our program? Amen. Well, we have one more song, and I may get a reprise. They don't know about it, but we'll work on that. But we have one more song, and it's really fun. So uh, just enjoy tonight. Amen. Our, our final uh, presentation.